What's up, everybody? I'm Michael Munsterman, and you're on Money Moves. Today, we're going to be talking about power on the other side of fear. Grind, grind, that's all I know. Find the time to quit, oh no. No matter good or bad, still I go. I never crack in the pressure. I can't be broke. Sun up to the sun down. Map it out, not run it down. Mayweather, I never lose. I be making these money moves. Sun up to the sun down. Map it out, not run it down. Mayweather, I never lose. I be making these money moves. So I was having a conversation with a couple friends the other day, and it was a really eye-opening conversation for me. And, and this is one of those situations where I think that the people that you surround yourself with is so powerful. You've really got to make sure that the people who you allow to enter into your life, you give them authority to speak into your world, that those people are somewhat your peer. That somewhere in the way that they operate and the way that they navigate, they are in your field. Not in necessarily the field that you are, that you use to make, like your vehicle to make money, just in the same ball game as you when it comes to income, goals, relationship, physicality, whatever it is, wherever that iron that sharpens iron situation is that you really want to be mindful of. Like, so inside of the first 60 seconds here on Money Moves today, you're going to get like an old school nugget that everybody repeats, iron sharpens iron, right? So true though. I was having a conversation with these guys and I was sharing with them an experience that I had had. And the experience was this. About a week and a half ago, I was invited to speak to a group of the Missouri National Guard recruiters. And I was thinking about like just their situations and and, and trying to, to cater the conversation of sales around those guys and, and what they do because I think what they do is so impactful and important. And that decision to join the military is just, it's, it's life altering for so many young people. And so I really, I was super mindful about that. And I had felt like I had prepared a whole bunch of stuff. And what's wild is anytime you go into one of those situations and, and you open up and you're training or teaching people, you almost always have a session of Q and A. And so I asked these guys, what are some of the biggest objections that you guys get? And, and their, their responses were, um, Fear of basic training, fear of the unknown, not sure of the process, a little bit of fear of what they're going to have to go through. But ultimately, the entire conversation was fear. Like their biggest objection, the biggest thing holding them back from making maybe one of the best life decisions that they've ever made was they were scared. And so... I left that conversation in that moment. I didn't think much about it. I just thought, yeah, you know, that makes sense. And so here's how I would address that. Um, I call it the M&M close, right? The M&M close is tell them everything that they, that you know, that they're going to want to object. You know, it's like the last scene of eight mile when like, um, B rabbit, like, right. M&M, um, is getting ready to battle rack Papa doc. And he's like, yeah, you know, I, I am white trash. I am a honky. My, my buddy Cheddar, Cheddar Bob did shoot himself, you know, um, my, my boy up here is an Uncle Tom. And like he goes around all these things. You, you fools did jump me, all six of you at once or whatever. Like, so side note, Phil doesn't believe I'm a good rapper. I really want to go just write word for word through that because I can, but I'm not going to because I, well, I don't want to geek out in front of you guys, but also um, I don't want to give him that footage. But you get the point. Like in that moment, he tells Papa Doc everything that everybody's continued to beat him down with but he eliminates any new possibility. And then he executes expanding the the weak spot. So he expanded Papa Doc's weak spot and says, okay, but here's what I know about you and your situation. And like, he just opens it further and further and further, expands the gap to a point that there's no way that he can be beat. Throws the mic at him and says, tell these fools something they don't know about me. And he does that close. So I proceeded to tell these guys, hey, I love the M&M close. Here's what it is. I understand that this is a big, scary decision and boom, 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 boom. We align every single one of their major fears with a bridge point that they can cross that fear out on their list of reasons to not make the decision to sign up and, and, and really a great decision for so many young people. It's not a fit for everybody, but for, for a lot of people, these guys, like all they have to do is explain, you feel like it's unknown but the world is unknown. That great big billions of different directions you could go and opportunities you could go and and not really knowing you could run into analysis paralysis and just spiral towards nothing 
or you can step into a system where every single month we take hundreds and thousands of young people and we run them through a very specific, well-known, proven system to, to generate a soldier on the other side, a soldier who gets skill sets, life sets, self-discipline, like this list of positive things Oh, in and, and college. And, and is there risk? Sure. But where isn't there risk? And so like it, it just, but I get it. I get, I get for these guys who, who maybe have, or have not had an immense amount of sales training, it gets a little scary and, and they start to just like, man, I, I'm going to get this objection. People are scared. People are scared. People are scared. And so I'm telling this story to a group of my peers. And I said, you know, what's funny is like, I'm absolutely no different than one of those little recruits. I was an avid CrossFitter. Um, in fact, in, in our in our home up north, we moved about two years ago. We moved two hours. We, we sold all of our, our residential real estate, our, our commercial real estate. We sold everything and decided to move to Kansas City. We wanted to keep most of our holdings here in, in the greater Kansas City area, at least at first. And so we sold absolutely everything and moved to the city. And, and at our previous home, I had built a CrossFit box. We were two hours from any CrossFit gym, two hours from Kansas City, two hours from Columbia, which that's um, uh, Columbia University, right square in the center. But anyway, um, we were two hours from any kind of a CrossFit box, but I enjoyed CrossFit. And so we had built out this box. I'd been doing CrossFit. I'd kind of semi-retired and, and was just managing real estate and and just kind of kicking it for about a year and a half with my wife and and really just, and you guys know this story, but what, what was weird was when I moved to the city, I felt phenomenal. I, like, I was in the best shape of my life. Like if you're a CrossFitter and you're listening to this, you know, my Murph time was, was around 50 minutes plus or minus three or four minutes. And, and if you're not a CrossFitter, like that's a, that's a really hard workout. It takes plus or minus an hour. And, um, like it's just, it's really a, a test of where you're at. So I walked into the box. I wasn't really fearing the wads. I, I fell in. I felt really, really great. And I hurt myself. I hurt my shoulder. I was trying to do a muscle up. I shouldn't have been. I, I, like I, I did something to it. Anyway, I took a week off. And, and, and then I went back a couple times. And then I took another week off. And then I went back a time. And then I took a few weeks off. And then I started to run this story in my head. And we got everything sold. And my wife was moving to the city. You know, she had followed behind. She stayed back to like button up the house stuff and some of the small details. And so she was moving in. So I gave myself all these excuses and reasons why I didn't need to be crossfitting every single day even though I loved it and it gave me power. And what's crazy, and this is what I was explaining to my buddies, I, I for the next nine or 10 months, every single day beat myself up because I wasn't working out. Like because I wasn't gunning towards this goal that I have of, of gaining power in every area of my life. And I know the rules, but I just started to run these stories. I'm, and, and, what started as an injury, when the injury stopped hurting, then it was this story of, well, you know, I just don't have time and, and I'm, I'm, I'm really focusing on family right now. And it just got crazier and crazier and crazier. The stories that I started running in my head just got louder and louder and louder. That weaker voice that we've talked about was gaining some power in this area of my life. But what I told my friends is like, here's the thing, guys, I was just scared. I knew going into CrossFit, going back especially, these guys had seen me at where I had felt like I was at my peak. Like I'm, I'm not gonna be, I, I'm afraid that I'm gonna suck at the workouts. I'm afraid that they're gonna kick my butt. I'm afraid that I'm not gonna be able to keep up. I'm afraid that like it's gonna be humiliating and humbling. And I'm afraid that I'm not gonna wanna get up. I'm afraid I'm not gonna wanna eat right. And I had this big list of things that it was just easier to stay where I was. And then I thought heading into this and beginning the podcast and doing everything we were doing, it gave me, a, it gave me a renewed why, like, why is it important that I stay in a place of power? And so I'm, and, and this is where we're going to get right into the meat of everything, but I had to, I had to kind of lead up into it like this, because I really want you to have the data points that I've had to get to this spot. The spot is, is that on the other side of that fear was power. I humbled myself when I went in and I, and I, like I prepared a little bit because I didn't want to just be a total, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't want to go in and, and just look ridiculous. 
And so I started running a few weeks ahead. I tried to get my cardiovascular just a little bit improved from my wine and, and potato chip eating couch self. You know, the guy who's just focusing on family, one bottle a night. No, I'm not quite that, but you know, doing whatever I wanted. And so I started to run and, and get ready and I went in and everything that I was afraid of would happen did happen. I was one of the last guys to finish the wad. I felt weaker than I had felt in, in maybe the last three or four years of my life. Um, I was humiliated. I was ashamed of myself. I didn't want to get up. Every single thing that I had convinced myself was why I shouldn't do it happened. But something happened that I hadn't thought about. And that is the day that I walked out of the front door and headed out to my vehicle, I felt really amazing. And even though I had been humiliated that morning and just ran into the dirt, like wanted to throw up. In fact, I think when I got home, I did go on ahead and throw up. But heading, heading into my day, like I felt so good. On the other side of the decision, the other side of the fear was so much power. And that day I just operated on fire and I remembered like, oh, this is that thing I'm addicted to. Why have I been stopping myself from this? I know this is a key area of my life. If I'm not physically fit, I can't operate at, at prime optimal capacity. There's no possible way that I can roll out of bed at 5 a.m. and not go to sleep until 11 and have enough energy and power to just light my day on fire, to run multiple companies, to handle dozens and dozens of employees, to, to worry about finances, cash flow, product you know, procurement, whatever it is that my focus is that day, renters, like it, it doesn't matter. Whatever industry we're talking about, like from bell to bell, I've got a lot of shit that I want to get done. Big shit. Like not some little like soft, oh, I think I'm, I'm probably going to make that goal. No, like I set goals that are challenging because I love knowing that people look at my role and think, how does he do all of that? And if nobody looks at my role, I don't really give a shit anyway because I'm doing it for me. I like I have an entire why set of why I'm attacking my day the way that I'm attacking my day. But like my entire world was suffering, but the lies were so strong and the fear was so palpable that it was holding me back from stepping through that to gain the power that I needed to crush it. And so whenever I start this podcast, I say on the other side of fear is power. It, let's take that and apply it across the board. Let's go back to the little recruit sitting on the opposite side of the desk from the recruiter. On the other side of that decision is power because they're given a purpose. They're taught a skill. They're put in a physical capacity where they can do more than most of them have been able to do their entire lives, to move quicker than most of them have been able to move their entire lives. They're taught like life skills and, they're, and then they're taught some combat skills, but all of those things are, are like new DNA that make them a little bit stronger, a little bit like bigger inside. It gives them such a great opportunity to operate at a level that they've never been in their life and would have taken them a decade of life lessons to acquire a percentage of the same things they were able to get in a 12 to 18 week window. Now let's go a step further. Let's flip from the recruit to the recruiter sitting on the other side of the desk. He didn't think or she didn't think that reaching out and talking to that guy was inside of their comfort level. They, they were a little afraid to reach out to that person because they're fearful of rejection. And the biggest rejections they get are, are fear coming from the person on that side of the desk. They're afraid. And so like, what happens to those guys when they do step through that fear and they do talk to that young person and that young person does make a decision that's the right one for them? Like they just impacted their life. And sometimes the right decision for that young person is a yes and sometimes it's a no. And these guys, re like they recognize that. It's not just a, it's not just a, like a puppy mill for, for recruits. It's like these guys are, are genuinely trying to help people make the right decision for their lives. And it's just so powerful. But there's no power gained when they won't even take the step to talk to somebody. And so as I'm taking that, I'm evaluating that, the same thing's true in every single area, right? Like the things that stop us from reaching our goals typically are insulated in fear. And you have to recognize that fear, do a checkup, like do the, the old school like phrases, check up from the neck up, look internally and recognize Fear for what it is, it's fear. 
It's that little negative voice inside of your head that's screaming, no, don't, what if, what if, what if? And just kicking the shit out of that guy and moving right on, like running right at it. A mentor of mine taught me, look, one of the greatest things that you can do to conquer fear is to put an event or some kind of a big goal on the other side of all the pits of fear that you have inside of your journey. So look forward ahead and think, like for me, this weekend, I'm, I'm competing in my first ever CrossFit competition. I might do well. I might get the crap kicked out of me. But I'm feeling better. Like this has been about three or four months now that I've been going back and I I feel in more power than I have in the last year of my life. I'm starting to hit those PRs that I was hitting before I went to to an actual CrossFit box the first time ever. I know I'm getting stronger and things are coming together and I'm feeling great and empowered, but none of that would have happened. None of that power would have been there if I hadn't recognized that I was scared and and just made a decision to step through it anyway. And so there's lots of ways you can do this. This could, You can apply this relationally. Look, um, I'm afraid that if I'm real with my spouse and tell them my concerns, that I might be throwing a grenade in the bottom of the canoe. Like I'm fearful that if I go and talk to my boss and tell him that I'm unhappy in my current role, I expect like my value to the company is greater than what I'm being recognized for, that I might get fired. Or I'm like, I'm afraid to step out and and go to that same boss and give him a letter of resignation and go do my own thing. But here's what I promise. Regardless of the situation, bar it being life-threatening, if you make a decision to walk through something that you're fearful of, but that voice inside of you is telling you you need to go through, you will find power on the other side of that. You will find the ability to gain immense multiples in that area of your life. You just have to make the choice to acknowledge it for what it is. It's fear. And then run through its face. Savvy. Thanks so much, everybody. I really appreciate you listening to this episode of Money Moves. I don't do this every time, but I just want to take a minute and plug a couple of the things that we've got going on. We're getting ready to launch this really cool coaching program. It's a digital program. It's going to go out sometime towards the end of October. If you have any interest in working with me one-on-one, I'm going to give early adopters of the podcast, of my content, an exclusive opportunity. Um, It's free, so don't hang up yet. Like, don't hit pause. I don't want, ah. Like, here's what I need. Um, I'm looking for, I'm only going to take three people, but reach out to me. I'm going to work with three people over the next 60 days. We're going to do a total evaluation of where you are, what you've got going on in your world, and and look for areas of scale. Look for opportunities. Look for these stories that we, that we can work through and help delete out. And then hopefully, like, point you in a direction that gives you some real tangible results in your life. A couple things in exchange for that. Um, in order for you to be considered, like you have to follow me on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And like you have to be pretty driven. If you've been at Walmart the last 10 years and Walmart's just where you want to be and you want to move from a stalker to um, a, a, a price tagger, like you're probably not a right, the right fit for me. But if you are... Um, if you are getting ready to start a company, if you've already started a little hustle or a side hustle, or if, if you're a business, really, I would say the cap to where I'm going to feel the most comfortable working with somebody is if your business does less than $10 million a year, I'm a good fit for you. I can help you look up, scale up, do the things that you want to do, accomplish the goals you want to accomplish, challenge you, hold you accountable and call bullshit on some of the stories that you're running in your head. The only give that I'm going to ask for in that entire thing is we want to document the journey. So um, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. If you're interested in that, you can DM me inside of Instagram. My 24-year-old daughter named Brooke, she told me that it's inappropriate to slide into somebody's DM. That's what she called it. Um, I felt kind of inappropriate having my daughter tell me that it was inappropriate to slide into anybody's anything. But but I, she went on and elaborated DM, direct message. We obviously know what we're talking about here. But um, it was just funny. Anyway, Feel free to private message me inside of either Facebook 
or Instagram. Instagram is probably going to be your best bet. And I'll have a quick conversation with you. We'll see if we're a good fit for one another and we'll go from there. Guys, I appreciate it. I can't thank you enough for all the support that you give us every single day. It makes us want to get out here and just give you more and more and more and more. We're going to keep pushing it out. Share it with your friends, like, comment, do the things that help us push our results up higher into the feed so that more people can find out how we can help them make the appropriate money moves to get them what they want in this world. Have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon.